Hi there YouTube and makers and welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me today and I'm glad you can make it. Today we have a little bit of unboxing. I picked up a few items that I thought would be useful. Then one of which is kind of a treat just because I was kind of interested in the story behind this brand. Um, and actually they're, they all come from the same brand and it's a brand of tools I don't think you would necessarily think of or expect. But let's take a look at what we have here. So, first item is this. So, these are all kind of used and vintage that I found online from everyone's favorite online retailing auctions place. And then uh, if you find anything on here is useful, um, the problem is with vintage tools, you don't, the flow isn't exactly predictable, one might say, and that it's whatever someone has and is selling and getting rid of. But uh, if you check out the description below, I think I figured out a way uh, to post the search for this stuff. So if you're interested in just searching this brand as tooling, Click on it and you'll be able to kind of bring up the search in, in uh, the auction site. So hopefully I can do this without damaging. It has a nice little wooden case. Let's see what we got here. Oh, there's some of the initials and pencils in there. But I don't know if you could see that. That says Mauser. Just like the German firearms manufacturer. Oh, just putting on there too. Looks like an old tag. It's all original. German, uh, but the uh, the German firearms manufacturer. And what we have here is some sort of beats of tail inventory tag, but a, I think it was a two and a half inch angle. And it is also, uh, if it doesn't come out clear, I'll post a picture, marked Mauser with the Mauser company logo. And it was kind of cool and interesting. And it's not a brand for making tools that I would normally think of and associate with. Mauser is typically a company associated with firearms and in particular, I think what comes to mind the most is the German K98K from World War II, the classic Mauser bolt action rifle. That, I mean, also goes back to World War I as well as a G98, QHER98, or something like that, I believe. But um, it's kind of something that's I find fascinating and interesting because, um, for me in particular, growing up, I remember kind of the the death and the death song of American manufacturing and in particular one memory that really sticks in my mind growing up is I remember when there was this game called Pogs that was popular. It's, it's a game that's typically played in Hawaii in which people take stack up milk jug caps and then use something called a slammer which is made out of metal or some other dense material to to kind of hit the stack of milk caps in order to flip them over. And I, when that game was popular, I remember seeing videos of kind of different manufacturers and throughout my community that were talking about how they were trying to kind of in their death song, they were, they were manufacturers in aerospace and they were making these things called the slammers for the paw game as kind of just trying to hold on, trying to keep manufacturing, though admittedly, soon afterwards, many of those manufacturers really did not survive and had, had all left the community. And it's something that I always thought was very sad and really kind of stuck with me because while my family wasn't directly affected and impacted, I had a lot of childhood friends that were. One of the things that inspires me to do my channel too is that I remember a friend, his father was a real, really into um, trains and his own father his father was building in their backyard a seven and a half inch so quite a bit wider gauge locomotive 
and he lost his aerospace job and I lost my best friend. They all had to move out of state. So it's something that really kind of resonates with me. And um, with that, these manufacturers like Mauser or, you know, another one that you may be familiar with is Winchester. If you click on the one of the links in the description below, you'll see that Winchester made a whole a range of home goods and domestic products like there's even like Winchester roller skates Winchester this company that probably hand in hand with Colt is the image and personification and heavily associated with the West me personally I really can't think of Colt and Winchester or any other companies that are why as typical and particularly companies that still exist to this day that are quite so personified with the American frontier and American Western culture. Um, another company that you may be familiar with and that is kind of along those lines that you're, if you go to your local do-it-yourself DIY or home box store is Husqvarna. Husqvarna is I believe a Swedish company and Husqvarna started its reputation in I think in its history making um, not, not uh, muskets for the Swedish crown and I think if you look I've seen pictures where there's like three crowns and that has to do with the, the, the Swe Swedish um, royal crest if I'm wrong please comment below and correct me because this is just pulling off the top of my head that I've come across years ago but Husqvarna if you go to your local box store they sell chainsaws they sell weed whackers and I know they sell weed whackers because I have one and it is a decent weed whacker that it's a great weed whacker and I like it but this isn't a weed whacker channel I'm sorry I digress too much but it's kind of an interesting story like I said that goes back to my childhood in which you see these companies who don't typically make other domestic products due to economic stress or changes in the time um, make other products that are way kind of outside the caliber caliber of what they're um, closely identified with. Like Mauser, it is more closely identified with that German bold action rifle, the German small arms. So that's the, the angle, so it's nice to have a nice handy little angle and if you were to look at it in context in relation to the lathe. It is appropriately sized for my projects and the projects of our build on the Kozo Hiroka Pennsylvania E3040 switcher steam locomotive engine in three quarter inch scale. But I also, since I got that, decided to get a few other Mauser tools. And this is one of them. And this is actually much more practical because while I was at my local metal supplier, I wanted to go through the um, remnant or drop bin, but I did not bring my nice calipers. And I wanted a set of calipers that I could kind of just bring there, throw in my back pocket and not worry about that were a little more affordable or readily transportable because uh, and I'll show you in a minute what I mean so if I don't cut myself that would be horrid maybe more entertaining for you but terrible for me so here it is comes in a nice leather case this is the first I've seen it. Let's see if it has any manufacturer marks. A little bit of damage. I think this, oh, this is a real leather. That's nice. Don't typically see you get that. But, here it is. A set of Mauser calipers. Made in Germany for a George Shear and Company in New York. And what I like about this, it goes down to a thousandths, right? And on the reverse, we have 
metric. And you can probably guess it's the same kind of deal. Now this one was a bit of an indulgence because I got the square and then I got the calipers and then I just started buying other stuff like it which it's okay mm -hmm. it's perfectly fine to treat yourself and wow nice big logo for Mauser an interesting uh, company seal on the back so or on the side nice details really I mean if you look at the the hinges are, are hidden in, on the inside but the latches have got these they're stamped so they're not super expensive but they have these nice little kind of filigree scroll work on them very nice detail I love the quality of this box so this is one of the things that attracted me to this not the packing material but it had all these documents with it and I didn't anticipate it being too too heavily used so you see there so this is Vernier caliper same thing made in Germany for G Geo Shear Co New York 12 New York I don't know what that means but nice in your adjustment a little bit of grime in there they look like they're fairly good shape so just need a nice detail cleaning original paperwork in German I assume um, and these are a little bit longer so that's kind of nice and useful these are nine inches so though the six inch does almost everything on this uh, three and a half inch gauge uh, steam locomotive. There are a few things that six doesn't quite measure up to, pun intended. But what I also found was really neat is that on the back side of this is that, I hope you can see that, and if not, I'll try to take a detailed picture. It has a fractional conversion from fractions to decimal. And that's always nice to know now. The other thing I liked about this is that the way these jaws are, and I'll try to get a detailed picture, but that, I thought that these would be very useful for measuring the boiler. So that's some of the tools I picked up. Um, and of course today's theme for new tooling is Mauser. And non-typical manufacturers for other domestic goods that I find really kind of interesting. So thank you for joining me. I'm glad you could be here and be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as that like button and tap that bell notification so you're alerted of any future videos we post. And be sure to stay tuned as we continue our build and our work on the Kozo Hirooka Pennsylvania A3 switcher in 040 in three quarter inch scale for a three and a half inch gauge track. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you guys next time. Have fun and keep making ships.